Good evening, everybody. On behalf of Association of Physicians of Ahmedabad and Noble Gastro Hospital, I, Dr. Yogesh Sharwani, welcome you all to sixth clinic of Advanced Gastro Summit. And I would like to thank Gujarat State Chapter of ASI, Gujarat State uh, Surgeons Association, as well as Physician Association of Ahmedabad, Association of Ahmedabad Surgeons, and Family Physician Association of Gujarat. who have contributed academically for this uh, program of advanced gastro summit 2020 so today we'll be discussing on hepatitis c and uh, with us today we have dr rajiv mehta introduction will be done by uh, dr ketan bhai but i would like to uh, give my sincere thanks and regards to sir sir is very uh, senior gastroenterologist and he has also contributed academically to almost all gastroenterologists of india maybe last 15 20 years whosoever gastroenterologists are passing they are reading his book clinical gastroenterology which is now into fourth edition and uh, dr rajiv mehta will be talking on hepatitis c so before that i would like to introduce dr gyan sir gyan sir is a was a president of physician association of ahmedabad and it was with his good wishes and hard work we could conduct our advanced gastro summit part 1 which is 2 now he is also a senior physician in amdavad working in sabarmati and uh, his chief interest is uh, diabetes management so i request you to moderate the session and please introduce our chair person and then ketan bhai will introduce today's speaker dr rajiv okay good evening good evening everyone uh first of all at the outset i would like to thank dr yogesh sharwani on behalf of association of physician amdavad for making humongous efforts in organizing such a good advanced gastro summit this summit is really wonderful it has given all the physician the feast of topics relevant in our day to day practice i have seen all the topics for such a long period four months tremendous effort tremendous congratulations yogesh thank you sir now i would like to uh, invite our chair persons dr ketan joshi who is a physician from visnagar and dr sandeep desai from walsar and as you all know uh, our speaker is the prolific speaker dr rajiv mehta from uh, surat he is a very senior gastroenterologist and hepatologist who will speak on hepatitis c in 2020 so i will now hand over the mic to our chair persons please Dr. Ketan is also a president of the association, sir, Gujarat Association, and it was with his permission we could uh, involve this association with us. Dr. Ketan, you continue. Yes, Dr. Ketan Joshi, I am practicing in Vishnagar, and I am secretary of EPG. I thankful to Yogesh Bhai Arwani for these all events, and also thankful to Gyan sir, and I will introduce. Rajiv Mehta, for he is a known gastroenterologist and he is a MD and DNB. He published forty <clears throat> national and international journals, in, and he is a very known gastroenterologist from Surat. Now we'll continue about hepatitis C from his knowledge. Rajiv, yes, I'll just share my and slide. I i will give hand over to sandeep desai sandeep sandeep desai he is also yeah hello ketan bhai you have already introduced dr rajiv bhai so let him continue with this and we will moderate the question answer session later yeah okay, okay continue okay, yeah. okay. Uh, uh thank you so much uh, dr yogesh uh, uh, it's an excellent uh, organization and it's very very difficult uh, to do all these things in your very busy practice so congratulations very i am thankful to amdavad medical association for the invitation today's my talk is on management of hepatitis c in 2020 i am restricted to the indian part i am not covering what is available in the western country which is majority of the drugs are not available in india so we are stick to what is available with us in hepatitis c management four major liver society in the world american european latin american and asia pacific 
including WHO, has given the slogan of eradication of hepatitis by 2030. So why hepatitis eradication is required? Because we all know 400 million people in the world are suffering from chronic hepatitis. Death due to cirrhosis and its complication, mainly because of hepatitis B and hepatitis C, is more than 1 million per year. And a death due to hepatocellular carcinoma is more than half a million per year. The most common predisposing factor for liver cancer is a cirrhosis of liver. And the major important cause of cirrhosis of liver is viral hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Thus, it is very, very important to eradicate the hepatitis B and C for better outcome. What are the eradication tools which we have? For hepatitis A and hepatitis E, we have improvement in food and water quality. For hepatitis B, we have vaccination and antiviral treatment. And now in hepatitis C, we have a newer treatment regimen, which has a very high cure rate. What is the prevalence of hepatitis C? India is a low to intermediate zone of prevalence of hepatitis C. But if you see the China and some part of Southeast Asia and Northern African uh, region, has a high prevalence of hepatitis C. In the country like in Egypt and all, the hepatitis C is elevated high, uh, mainly because of uh, some problem uh, with their health system. What are the stages of liver disease in hepatitis C? If the normal liver acquired hepatitis C infection, over a period of 10 years to 15 years, it's developed a chronic hepatitis, and then it develops a cirrhosis of liver, and then cirrhosis leads to a hepatocellular carcinoma, end stage liver disease, and death. Natural history of hepatitis C. Once the virus acquired in the body, 20 to 30% will have an acute hepatitis symptoms. Majority of the symptoms are been unnoticed or noticed as a mild viral illness. 15 to 25 percent of that population clear the hepatitis C virus and they become HCV RNA negative. Fulminant hepatic failure is rare with hepatitis C. Out of this acute infection, 75 to 85 percent patient goes into the chronic phase. They develop a cirrhosis of liver over 20 years of a period of time. Few develop an extra hepatic manifestation. Once they develop the cirrhosis, they either have a decompensated cirrhosis or they have the hepatocellular carcinoma. Once they decompensate, five-year survival is less than 50% and hepatocellular carcinoma develop 1% to 4% per year in hepatitis C. So the process of a chronic infection leads to a cirrhosis and end-stage liver disease may take 15 years, 20 years, 25 years. So it's a slow virus. It progresses very slowly in the body. There are six genotypes available for hepatitis B. In India, we see genotype 1B and 3. And in United States, usually see 1, 3A, 2A. And Europe is a similar pattern. So we have only two genotypes which are very commonly seen. More than 90% of population is genotype 3A and 1B. A distribution of genotype in India is also varies. Few North Indian center has more 1B and few South Indian centers has more genotype 3A. If you see the previous treatment, which was with pigylated interferon and ribavirin, genotype 3 was easy to treat genotype. But if you see the recent treatment, genotype 1B is easy to treat, 
and genotype 3 is difficult to treat. So if you have an empty HCV positive patients comes with the report of empty HCV positive. So you need to do an HCV RNA quantification. And if HCV RNA is not detectable, so patient is not having a current HCV infection. So we need to either repeat HCV RNA after three to six months, or you need to do other additional appropriate tests. If HCV RNA positive with a background of antibody positivity, it's a current HCV infection. So all HCV infection, irrespective of a viral load, whether it's a high or mild or moderate viral load, they needs a treatment. So how to assess the severity of a liver disease? We know the hepatitis C has a spectrum of a disease, chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis. So how to see the stage of fibrosis or stage of cirrhosis? Non-invasive biomarkers are available. Fibroscan, MRE, magnetic resonance elastography, and liver biopsy. Out of that, available things, liver biopsy seems to be a gold standard, but liver biopsy had got its own pros and cons. In an era of non-invasive biomarkers and non-invasive tools, we usually don't perform a liver biopsy in hepatitis C. What should be the best non-invasive marker? Non-invasive tool, best tool should be easily available, cheap, accurate, and reproducible. If you see the biomarkers, there are many biomarkers are available for fatty liver. But the biomarkers in hepatitis C as more of a negative predictive value. So out of this non-invasive tool, we have fibroscan and now we have MR elastography. What is a fibroscan? If you see the liver, liver is a soft, elastic, viscous structure. So the shear waves, which has been coming through the transducer will not propagate inside. So this is a fibroscan machine. This is the machine with a probe. The probe has a vibrator and the vibrator delivers a frequency of a shear force through this transducers. This is 50 megahertz uh, vibrator and this is five megahertz transducers. So it penetrates the soft liver, but this shear waves will not be penetrated into the soft liver. So they come back and this station analyze the shear wave reflection and they give the value in kilopascal. But as the liver becomes stiff, liver becomes less elastic, there is more and more shear wave propagation in the liver, leads to more and more reflection, lead to more and more value, higher value of kilopascal. So lower the kilopascal, softer is the liver. Higher the kilopascal, stiffer is the liver. So this is a fibroscan view. Previously, in the liver biopsy era, we have a metavir scoring system. Hepatitis B causes necroinflammation, while hepatitis C causes fibrosis. For necroinflammation, we have nodal ISEC score. But for fibrosis, we have a metavir scoring system. F1, F2, F3, and F4. There are good data of this fibrosis correlation with fibroscan. If the fibroscan value is 2.5 to 7, it usually shows no fibrosis or a minimal fibrosis. If the value is 9.5 to 12.5, is a significant fibrosis. 
and more than 12.5, it is a cirrhosis of liver. This is a gray zone between 7 to 9.5, where the data of reproducibility is little lower. But as your FibroScan score progress, say 12, then goes to 25, goes to 30. So it becomes more and more stiff. There are data shows if their value are 25 to 30, there is a high prediction of esophageal varices on an endoscopy. If the value is further going more than 45, 50, then there is a chance of development of ascites. Or there, there are some papers shows correlation of hepatic venous pressure gradient with a high fibroscan score. So fibroscan is a very good modality, may good modality of non-invasive marker if your value is less than seven, you are fine. That is perfect. Your patient has no significant fibrosis. But if your value is more than 12.5, means your patient has a cirrhosis. So gives a broader idea in a more accurate way to judge the severity of a fibrosis in hepatitis C. So we'll tell you a real life case, 45 year old, Mr. Asymptomatic, accidental HCV detection during blood donation. What are the necessary tests? Necessary tests are routine blood investigation, liver function, renal function, prothrombin time, electrolytes, lipid profile. Lipid profile in all mainly associated cardiovascular morbidity and coexistence of non-alcoholic fatty levels. Level 1A evidence. Liver-specific investigation, you need to have a co-infection with hepatitis B and HIV because the treatment modality is little different if they have a co-infection. Then you do a sonography of abdomen to see a presence of chronic liver disease, presence of collateral, splenomegaly, cirrhosis, ascites, etc. If your patient has already been cirrhotic label on the sonography, then there is no need to do elastography. No point in doing elastography. Your patient is already cirrhotic. But your patient is having normal liver, no chronic liver disease, no collaterals, normal spleen size, no ascites. Then yes, you perform an elastography and see the value. So that value you can repeat once your patients clear the hepatitis C. Then there are specific viral specific tests like viral load, HCV, RNA quantitative, and genotype. It's called evidence 1A. So factors affecting the treatment. What are the factors which affect the treatment? Stage of cirrhosis. F1, F2 doing good, then F3, F4. Duration of the treatment is little change, and the sustained virological response is little change, almost 95 and 98 to 100. Not much of a difference, but yes, stage of fibrosis and cirrhosis plays a very important role in the judgment of the treatment. Genotype 1A, 1B, easy to treat with newer treatment. Genotype 3 is little difficult to treat this uh, newer treatment. Whether patient is treatment naive or treatment experienced, if patient is previously exposed to interferon ribavirin and they don't respond, or patient exposed to any other newer directly anti, uh, direct acting antiviral agent, then the treatment is be different. So naive and experience is also very important. So before prescribing the medication, you must know the stage of a liver disease and patient is treatment naive or experience. And yes, as we have more pancreatic treatment, we probably little go without even the genotype assessment. Goal of the therapy to prevent cirrhosis, HCC, and liver transplantation. Hepatitis C cure is measured by sustained virological response. It is called SVR. SVR is aviremic at 12 weeks after stopping the treatment. If you give the treatment for three months, then after three months of the treatment, 
you measure the hepatitis C and if the hepatitis C virus is undetectable, it is called SVR12. So where exactly the treatment is required? Treatment is required during this period of time. It's a good treatment option. The moment patient become decompensated, the chances of benefit with anti-hepatitis C treatment is becoming low. So it is always better to pick up early, treat it. It is easy to treat the hepatitis C nowadays. So previously, when we were using the Nokia phone, there was a viral eradication is by immune modulation of hepatitis C by pigillated interferon and ribavirin. See, do, they don't act directly on the virus. They don't do virus killing. They modulate the immune response and they, they destroy the hepatocyte and then they destroy the virus. So immune modulation. But now we have direct viral destruction. So it is called direct antiviral agent, DAA, in various combinations. So that DAA came the concept from HIV treatment. In B, C, and HIV treatment, the difference is hepatitis B and HIV, we cannot eradicate the virus, is only a suppression, suppression, and suppression. But for hepatitis C, we can really eradicate the virus and we take a, a lesson from an HIV medicine by combination of two or three antiviral drug, we can target the structural protein of hepatitis C and lead to a direct viral destruction. So 2011, the first antiviral agent as identified was called telepravir and gosipravir. After that, lot of new drugs have come up. Lot of new changes have happened in the treatment. Once upon a time in 2015-16, every 15 days, the international guideline kept on changing. Right. So every one month, we see a new drug coming in with a new guideline, with a new society. Right. So these are the drugs. So if you see the non-structural protein, NS1 to NS5B, there is called NS3 inhibitor called protease inhibitor. The drug end is Previd, is protease inhibitor, NS3. It is called, what is available right now is Gazoprovid and Peritrepravir, not in India, but in the Western country. Right? So, Previr is a protease inhibitor. Then comes NS5A inhibitor is called Asvir. We have Veltapasvir, Deklatasvir and Ledipasvir is available in the country. Then we have polymerase inhibitor act on NS5B. It is Soguspovir which is available. So, Previr is NS3, Svir, NS4A, 4B, and 5A, and NS5B is Buvir. Available DAAs in India, directly antiviral agents. So, Fusbovir, NS5B, Ledipasvir, 4A, 5A, Deklatasvir, 4A, Veltapasvir, NS4A inhibitor. Sobuspovir has a major renal clearance. So it is contraindicated in GFR less than 30, while rest has a biliary excretion. So no dose adjustment required in CKD patients. Sobuspovir has a high genetic barrier of resistance. So very low resistance with Sobuspovir. But NS4A inhibitor has a low genetic barrier of resistance. So you have to use NS4A in a correct dose of a correct duration. 
otherwise they will develop a resistance so the breakthrough in svr12 in hepatitis c is basically an s4 inhibitor problem not a ns5b problem right so if your creatinine clearance is normal then they are very very safe drug obuspovir is pan genotypic ledipaspir upton genotype 1 Deklatazavir is approved from genotype three, and Veltapasvir is pan genotypic. Just concentrate on Sobuspovir and Veltapasvir. This is the most important combination, single pill available in India with a quite quite reasonable rate. So forget about Ledipasvir, Deklatazavir right now. Just remember soft Veltapasvir. So the regimen for non-cirrhotics: soft Veltapasvir, eight to twelve weeks, more than ninety-eight percent success rate. Recent study shows eight weeks and twelve weeks similar success in non-cirrhosis. So preferably even eight weeks, good enough. Then comes cirrhosis, same regimen, little more duration. compulsory 12 weeks with a very high sustained virological response nearly 100 genotype 3 little difficult to clear deklatazavir is a drug for genotype 3 veltapasvir is a drug for genotype 3 12 weeks duration is ideal we are facing lot of problem in genotype 3 Where we need to add ribavirin, or we need to extend the duration of a treatment to twelve to twenty-four weeks in few patients, which success rate is more than ninety-five percent. Cirrhosis, extended period of time with little blunting SVR, but you need close monitoring and you add ribavirin. And now there is one more drug you can add uh, a, a protease inhibitor also in difficult to treat case. So in India, the base is sofuspovir, once a day. If genotype one, add ledipasvir ninety milligram daily. Genotype three, deklatazavir sixty milligram daily. This was the true treatment in two thousand seventeen. 2016 and mid 2018 so now we have pan genotypic veltapasvir combination so remember this only sofuspovir plus veltapasvir single tablet 8 weeks non cirrhotic 12 weeks cirrhotic for genotype 1 12 weeks genotype 3 12 to 24 weeks genotype 3 cirrhotics so very important well tolerated registration trial shows dropout rate is less than 1% some drug drug interaction but no major drug yes we need to remember amiodarone we need to remember beta blockers that can cause a heart block particularly with deklatazavir previously there was lot of problem with ppi and deklatazavir and veltapas uh, and ledipasvir as in nthiv NTHIV drug we usually avoid acid suppression. Acid suppression leads to reduction in the bioavailability of the drug. Same is little true, but still you can use twenty milligram of omeprazole liberally if patient is needed. Post treatment follow up no cirrhosis. You don't need long term follow up. But if there is a cirrhosis, you need indefinite follow up. For development of hepatocellular carcinoma or a development of decompensation, non-cirrhotic patient with the risk factor like a hemodialysis patient, thalassemic, inherited bleeding disorder, you need follow up, irrespective of their SVR. What are the area of research? CKD four you cannot use sovusvovir. because it is contraindicated in other part of the world mainly western world there are a lot of drugs available like 3d 4d gp etc drug peritrepravir and gesoprovir which is 
can be used in CKD patient. But we have published data from our center that Sobuspovir is safe, has got an excellent SVR. Data in children and pregnant women are still limited. Data on acute hepatitis C is not there. Yes, HCC with HCV, you must treat hepatitis C along with HCC treatment. We have many publications in hepatitis C, including patient on hemodialysis, patient with beta thalassemia, patient with uh, 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 inherited disorder. Global trial we have. We have a, a registration trial in India. So we have many publications in hepatitis C. In summary, hepatitis C's treatment is safe and effective. Each patient should be offered hepatitis C treatment. High chance of HCV elimination with newer antiviral agent. So previously, interferon, lot of ribavirin, lot of reaction, dropout, decompensation, less SVR, now converted excellent one or two, three DA in one pill with an excellent results. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll be happy to get uh, some questions. Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Yogesh. Yes, sir. To request chairpersons to please uh, conduct the question answer session as well as I would like to request Dr. Gyan sir to moderate the session further. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rajiv, for the excellent overview of the treatment of hepatitis C. And now, is there any questions? Is there in chat box questions? Yes, sir. Uh, is there any role of genotype? Doing genotype when we have a pan genotype drugs. So, is there any role of doing genotype? The exactly as I told you, you can skip the genotype check in a very garden variety hepatitis C patient. But if the patient has a risk factor cirrhotic metabolic syndrome, it is always better to check a genotype because you need to have a sustained virological response in a difficult to treat cases. So garden variety, yes, you may not need it. So you can save the cost of genotype because the cost of genotype, you can complete even half a month treatment of soft valpa. Dr. Hardik has asked the same question. Sir has already answered. There is an, another question by Dr. Ashwin Vagani. Is there any recurrence HCV infection after complete completing treatment and zero viral load? No, basically, the, once it is sustained virological response, it is sustained virological response until unless patients acquired another virus, another route of if the patient is drug abusers, say. So even if they clear the virus, there is a chance of reinfection. Same with HCV with hemodialysis patient, thalassemic patient. But by and large, if the patient is on a low risk category, the chances of relapse of hepatitis C, even if immunosuppression, even if rituximab is extremely low. But so there are certain uh, guidelines of various societies who recommend doing HCV RNA every six months or every year after uh, SPR. No, I think mean that that is being changed right now because they are sustained means sustained. Right. But yes, there are certain high risk cases like a bad decompensated disease or those who are on immunosuppression. They, you need to check if you if you don't if you are not expecting the course of the liver illness in your uh, uh, follow. Rajiv, the uh, treatment of hepatitis C in pregnant ladies. Sir, it is we usually don't treat with hepatitis C number one because uh, at least mother to child transmission is there, but it requires a very very high viral load number two. Number three, these all the drugs have very low data uh, to use a safety in hepatitis C. So hepatitis C is the things which transmission is low and fatality to the mother in with hepatitis C is extremely low. So we usually don't treat. So there's one related question. Uh, when a, uh, one of the partner is suffering from hepatitis C and he or she is planning for 
pregnancy uh, right. for a baby right then what do you advise no, it is always better to treat uh, hepatitis c because we have a treatment of only 3 months 3 months 3 months treatment with a very high success rate so before they th we don't know we do want to take a single chance Although the transmission, sexual transmission with hepatitis C is also not very high as compared to B and HIV. But yes, why to take a chance? If, if you know up front, then it, with three months of very reasonable cost treatment, if your virus is getting clear 98% of the time, I would definitely uh, ask the couple to wait and watch for another six months. What are the treatment costs sir, for three months or 12 weeks? It's all, almost around, depends, around 8,000 to 10,000 rupees a month. So, around 30,000 rupees a, a total cost. Plus, I guess the monitoring might be... Uh, monitoring the... is becoming very easy right now. It is in the era of pegylated interferon ribavirin. Oh, so difficult for us, right, to treat and monitor. They drop hemoglobin, they decompensate, they have fever etc. But there, you give one pill and tell them to come after three months. Okay. Absolutely no problem. You okay. don't have to check the viral load again and again. You need to check viral load at baseline and viral load at the end of six months of total treatment. Three months treatment, three months off treatment. Finished. Right. But yes, it is important a follow-up of a cirrhotic HCV. You cannot, once the HCV is gone, you cannot leave, oh, Tata, bye-bye, don't come again. You need constant follow-up because they still are a risk factor for hepatoma development. So there is a question by Dr. Hardik. He has to put a real case. He wants to know that his wife of a HCV positive patient who presented with HCV viral load of 52 international units per ml and anti-HCV was negative, LFT, CBC, USD were normal. There were no varices. Should I treat this woman? No, I would not definitely treat this patient. Would close supervise the patient and probably repeat the HCV RNA with a different method if they have done the uh, attackman method. So I will change the method of uh, uh, PCR and then see. But yes, 52 is extremely low or uh, viral load with normal with negative anti-HCV. Will not treat. There is, sir, another case uh, scenario by Dr. Smith uh, Vagashia. He has a patient with chronic kidney disease on hemodialysis. He is already treated with HCV. Earlier, he had HCV and he has treated him. Now, how to do surveillance and how frequently you should check for HBV as well as HCV? See, basically, if you, if you see the HCV, KDGO guideline is saying you have to do every six months HCV, B, C, and HIV in any dialysis uh, uh, unit. So if the patient is clear HCV by either BAA or PEG-RIBA, they need to check anti-HCV every three to six months. They Different uh, uh, dialysis unit, they have their own protocol. But yes, they need to check with B, C, and HIV. There is a question by Dr. Ashwin Garvi. He is a uh, president of our association of physicians of Ahmedabad. He has a case in which he has HCV patient along with HBSAG together. So how we should manage this patient? Should it, is, it is extremely important. See, we, we see that ek miyan mein do talwar nahi rehti hai. Vaise ek body mein do virus proliferate ek saath nahi hote hai. If you see this type when there is COVID-19, there are many patients where dengue NS1 positive and COVID-19 also RT-PCR positive. We may see, we have seen few patients, but there is dominating by only one virus, not both the virus. Right. So if you tell C and B, C is usually dominating than B. Right. So in that situation, you have to, you have to treat C and carefully see whether the B relapse will not happen. Right. So C treatment is priority and then C the breakthrough of hepatitis B should not happen. Many of the time, once you started aviremia of hepatitis C, then the B will come up. 
if you see your HCV RNA is high, HBV DNA is undetectable. This is usual scenario in co-infection with hepatitis B. So you treat C, close supervised B, check the, usually they have a viral breakthrough first and then they have a biochemical breakthrough next. So close supervision and as and when you feel you introduce hepatitis B treatment. So there's uh, another question by Dr. Hardik that patient had taken four weeks of pan-genotypic treatment for HCV positive before six months. And then he's off treatment due to economic reason. Now again presented with high HCV load. So he wants to know again, we should start with the same molecule or we should change it. No, you should, same molecule, no problem. See, if you can continue molecule, see, it was a defaulter, not a treatment non-responders. See, treatment non-responders is dealt differently than treatment defaulters. See, with serbuspovir has a high genetic barrier of resistance. Even if you use again and again, there is no problem. So to me, if the patient has a garden variety of hepatitis C, you should give at least 12 weeks of the same regimen. There is a question by Dr. Narendra Sanghvi. He's a senior surgeon from Ahmedabad. He wants to know up to what blood viral level load patient is highly infective to operating surgeon or we should always treat the virus before elective surgery or we can go without treating the virus for elective surgery. For emergency anyways, we are not going to treat the patient but no, for elective surgery, what should we do? No, see if you take universal precaution, there is no viral load limit for B, HIV or HCV transmission. So if your patient is HCV positive, rather than viral load, it is important to assess the severity of liver injury, whether he is able to sustain your anesthesia or he is able to sustain your surgery. So it is very vital to see the severity of the disease rather than see the viral load for the patient-doctor transmission. So take a good universal precaution if your surgery is elective, better to treat, do it after that. If TKR is there, THR, THR of course is different, but TKR is there, then you do some elective procedure. Then you can always wait if your liver disease permits. There's a very interesting question, sir, by Dr. Smith. He wants to know that if a patient is HCV positive, and he has given two, three scenarios, like if patient also has IBD, he's on immunosuppression, or if patient has cancer and he's on chemo, or he has HIV together, how to manage? Oh, see, this all is different when you have a B and you have a C. I, I told you before, C is extremely easy to treat right now. So in spite of your patient is on immunosuppressed, patient is on azathioprine, patient is on rituximab, treatment of hepatitis C is easy and effective also, right? But for an HIV, yes, again, you have to see the viral load of C and viral load of HIV. You always see that HIV has a high viral load and HCV is undetectable and then your anti-HCV is positive. So it is extremely difficult to have a two replicating virus in one immune system. Extremely uncommon. A question by Dr. Piyush. Uh, he wants to know, sir, how do you treat acute hepatitis C in your clinical practice? Acute hepatitis C, first of all, it is extremely difficult to pick up uh, clinically. The patient may not report to you. Usually, what we usually call initially hepatitis C is an ectric virus. Right, it was an n ectric hepatitis. So they come with, uh, with a very prodromal symptoms and they clear the virus. Sometimes if the patient is an acute hepatitis C-like illness and then NTHCV is positive, really you need a biopsy to confirm this is an acute hepatitis C. Right, so acute hepatitis C is little controversial topic, number one. Acute hepatitis C treatment guideline is also not very robust. This is in the era of pigulated interferon. You give a short course of even conventional interferon, peg interferon, they clear. 
some societies, some hepatologists believe anyway 20% are automatically clear. Why you want to clear, want to do antiviral treatment, wait for three to six months, make it become a chronic virus, and then chronic hepatitis C, easy to treat with one tablet for three to six months. So first, C, identification acute condition is not common. Number two, if it is common, it is difficult to diagnose. You probably need a liver biopsy to exclude a chronic hepatitis C or acute hepatitis C. And then you will wait for three to six months, at least 12 weeks, to see whether there is a spontaneous clearance. And if there is a no spontaneous clearance at the end of three months, would like to treat with DAA for three to six months. Sir, any uh, case scenario in which you would recommend adding ribavirin in today's oh, yes, Still, ribavirin is not out of the box. Still, ribavirin is still in the armamentarium with genotype 3. Previously, no response to soft velpa or soft decla or soft uh, 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 or peg riba. So if the patient is previously exposed to peg riba and they, they lost follow-up and they come back to you, still compensated disease, but they have not responded SVR24. So in that situation, I would definitely add soft valpa and ribavirin for at least 12 to 24 weeks. But not, not in cirrhotics, only compensated. Cirrhotics, you can take well-compensated cirrhosis in a lower dose. You have to be carefully observed for ribavirin-induced anemia. Their tolerance is little lower. As the cirrhosis progress, the tolerance to ribavirin becomes low and low. So probably if genotype 3 with the decompensated cirrhosis, better to avoid ribavirin. But yes, it is a compensated cirrhosis. Child score A then probably you can you can use uh, ribavirin 200 milligram three times a day in genotype three, and then closely supervise the patient's hemoglobin and then take a call. So if a patient has been diagnosed for the first time as having hepatocellular carcinoma, and the etiology is HCV virus, so is antiviral treatment beneficial or we should concentrate more on HCC? See, it is two ways. What is an HCC? What is a stage of HCC called BLCC class uh, uh, A, B, C, D? See, if the patient is undergoing hepatectomy, well compensated disease, small lesion, do along hand in hand with the treatment and surgery. In case of taste or RF ablation, con patient is well compensated, CTP score is less, MILD is less than 12, then yes, you treat it. But yes, the treatment scenario is different when there is a decompensated disease with portal vein thrombosis, with a large mass, then uh, it, is, it is very difficult. It's little futile exercise to treat the hepatitis C. But yes, people are giving the antiviral agent give some benefit because relatives are telling, sir, kuch to karna hai humko. Theek hai. Then we prescribe an anti-HCV. But rational use is very modest in this condition. One situation where there are three lesions, they are in Milan criteria or under UCSF criteria and going for the liver transplantation, then probably during the process, we try to make it a viremic. So better to treat parallelly, no harm in parallel, but that depends on what is the stage of a cirrhosis and what is the stage of hepatocellular carcinoma. So still we have some time. If you permit us, there are one oh, or yes. two more questions. 100%. 100%. Sir, uh, there is a question by Dr. Smith Kumar Vagashia. In HCC due to HCV, transplant candidate, first treatment, then transplant or reverse? Oh, it depends what is the waiting list. It depends what is the LDLT or DDLT. Some people are saying you don't, uh, don't treat HCV. Just do transplant. We will treat HCV afterward also. So after post-transplant HCV treatment is quite successful, right? In India, we have soft, but in other part of the country and other part of the world, they have much more safer drug available than even sopuspovir also. So depends what is the timing. If you are a living donor liver transplant, you have no time to wait. 
no need for the treatment. Just do transplant, stabilize the graft for three to six weeks, and then start anti-HCV treatment. Moderators and chairpersons, any further questions? I guess a lot of questions have already been answered. Uh, should we just conclude or do you want to continue? I think I will keep it to Dr. Gyan. I think uh, many questions have been answered. Uh, I think we should, I think, call it a day. Mm, call it a day. So I must, should I, should I conclude? Yes, yes. Yeah. So now I must thank Dr. Rajiv Mehta for the excellent overview of the hepatitis C treatment and you have answered all the questions so nicely. I think this is the first time I am listening to such a good lecture on hepatitis C. And uh, along with that, I want to thank Dr. Sandeep Desai and thank Dr. You. Ketan Joshi for chairing the session. And uh, finally, I am thankful to Dr. Yogesh for giving me this opportunity to uh, take program a part in this program. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank you. On the, on the end, I must thank all the participants who have attended, the, attended this program. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Yogesh. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.